All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I am talking over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this gorgeous 62 degree mid-June day. It is Tuesday, somewhere around June 14th, 2023. Uh, heading to 45 degrees tonight here and at Bugs in a Jar Farm as, uh, well, other than a couple of little spikes of heat, this so far is turning out to be the coldest uh, well, I, I've been here for six weeks. This is the coldest May 1st to June 15th I have ever spent in my entire life. The high tomorrow in the middle of June, 62 degrees in Ithaca, New York. I am, uh, I keep hearing all this stuff about heat waves and uh, wildfire. Well, I guess we are getting some hints of some wildfires. But uh, what is it, 125 degrees in Puerto Rico, it's 100 degrees in Siberia, going to be uh, over 100, I think, in Spain. Uh, isn't Southeast Asia, aren't they baking? Uh, and here we are uh, with my sweatshirts and everything else on, but uh, I do hear rumors of some heat waves in the blistering summer of 2023. I invite anybody to come visit at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I was checking in, uh, noticed in Inverness, Florida today, where I used to have a place down there in Florida at 9.30 this morning with the heat index it was feeling like 97 degrees at 9.30 this morning uh, in central Florida. It was felt like 105 when I checked in yesterday. But speaking of checking in with all of that, we're going to check in with my good buddy and uh, fellow Doomer, <clears throat> Elliot. Jacobson. Uh, I need, I know I, guys, I know I need to do another video with Elliot, and we need, and Elliot and I need to start interviewing people, but I have never been so busy in my entire life. So, uh, before Elliot thinks I have abandoned him forever, we're going to check in with Elliot. It's been a while since Elliot has made a new post to his blog. He also has an excellent YouTube channel, Climate Casino, but this is from his uh, written blog, Watching the World Go By, B-Y-E, Go By, Elliot Jacobson's Collapse of Everything blog, and Elliot is a lot more uh, tuned in to the science of climate collapse than yours truly. And uh, so he's got all of these charts and graphs and pictures you really need to see uh, to follow this blog. So a lot's going to be missing, but I'm getting ready to read. Uh, but Elliot is going to attempt to answer the question, WTF is, is happening? WTF is happening, question mark, an overview. So we're gonna get an overview from Elliot Jacobson of WTF is happening. Oh, and I wanna plug, uh, if you're listening to this, this evening, it's actually June 3rd, Tuesday, June 13th, between 9 and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Go over to Sandy Shellis at an environmental coffee house. Sandy's gonna be uh, bringing Jim Massa on her show tonight, and I'm a assuming that Sandy and uh, Jim are gonna be talking a lot about the same stuff that Elliot's talking about here, 
So try to catch that live, or if you missed her show live, when you finish listening to this, go listen to her discussion with Jim Massa, and Jim can help fill in some blanks. But we're going to turn it over to Elliot Jacobson for an overview of WTF is happening. And if this battery runs out of this camera in the middle of this rant, uh, oh well, sorry about that. Take it away, Elliot. As of June 10th, 2023, worldwide data showed the remarkable concurrence of three dramatic climate events. The first, WTF, is in the Antarctic where sea ice extent is setting record, low da record lows daily, now fully over 2 million kilometers below the 1991 to 2020 mean. This is not some one-off event. A decline like this has long been predicted. The impact is that there is a lot more open ocean than normal for this time of year. Ocean, open ocean means the ability to absorb incoming solar radiation and that means further heating in a well-known feedback loop. So the feedback loops are looping in Antarctica. Even the mainstream media is covering this story unbelievably. Using JAXA data, which he has graphed out here, I prepared an image to illustrate just how crazy this moment is. And then you have to go on here to, uh, to, to look at the image. But uh, anyway, this red line, the blue is what it's supposed to look like. You know, that black line across the middle is like the mean and the red line is what it looks like in 2023. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if anybody, uh, the climate change deniers, are uh, still claiming that ice, Arctic, Antarctic sea ice is continuing to grow. All right, I prepared an image to illustrate just how crazy this moment is. The way you read the image below is that each horizontal blue wavy line is anyway, um, blah, blah, blah. The years shown in this image are 1991 to 2023, with 2023 in red to highlight just how unusual it is. For those of you with keen eyes, the dip the, the, the blue dip at the lower right corresponds to the year 2016, the year after that last El Nino and a harbinger of what may be ahead. So right now we're tracking pretty much identically with uh, 2016. It just looks like a repeat. Okay, below is a picture courtesy of Kevin Pluck using NSISC data that he has a link to that shows daily Antarctic sea ice extent. 2023 is represented by the blue line. So, uh, again, I know this is my fancy way of doing it. If you can see this, if you can see that little light blue line below the purple, that is what it looks like on graphed this way. Uh, the uh, lowest Antarctic extent ice yet. Okay, so much for Antarctica. Let's move over to the second WTF unfolding. Well, there's about 30,000 WTFs unfolding. Elliot has just picked out three of the uh, 30,000 WTFs unfolding today. All right. The second WTF regards global two-meter surface temperatures, where on June 10th, for the third consecutive day, temperatures breached the one-and-a-half C barrier 
above the 1850, 1900 PC, IPCC baseline. This is not the same as breaking the Paris one and a half C barrier, which requires the long-term planetary average to be one and a half C, nor is it the same as breaching one and a half C for the year. These temperature spikes have happened many times before, but this breach does act as a benchmark for the inevitable future that is coming. For those who like statistics, on June the 9th, that is that four days ago, global two meter temperatures reached 4.8 standard deviations above the 1979-2000 mean. And Elliot, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, critiquing here. I really wish you had defined for us exactly what the two, the two meter surface temperature, what does that mean? The, I, I, I'm a little unclear. First, I thought he was talking about two meters below the surface, but then he used this. So I, 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 guys, I'm reading this. So Elliot, uh, could you please go back in, maybe leave a comment here and do a little bit of editing uh, to tell us clueless morons to define your term global two meter surface temperature. Okay, but whatever it is, it's going through the roof. That's the, all right, so uh, we're gonna move on to the third WTF moment overview. All right, and the third WTF is perhaps the furthest from any notion of normalcy. WTF is happening to the world's oceans, and in particular, the North Atlantic. Ocean temperatures have been setting unprecedented daily records, spiking to highs that are shocking climate scientists as they look for possible reasons. Here is a picture from climatereanalyzer.com that gives a sense of world sea surface temperature anomalies on June the 10th. So obviously the, the redder, the, uh, you know, it's basically the oceans are a, uh, are a boiling pot. Especially if you look off, good Lord, the coast of Peru seems to be on fire. Uh, off the coast of West Africa seems to be on fire. Uh, interestingly, southeast of Greenland, which usually because of all of the melting water from Greenland, usually that's blue, but even it seems to be boiling. Uh, then I guess this is off the coast of Siberia. We have another hot spot. And weirdly, uh, right off the coast of Baja, California, we have a cold spot. Not many cold spots in the oceans. <clears throat> the following shows daily global sea surface temperature anomalies over the region 60, you know, 60 degrees south to 60 north, which, while well, the tropics are 30 to 30. So across the middle of the planet for the years 1982 to 2022 in their entirety and through June 10th for the year 2023 using this data, and he's got links to all of this, the recent spike is hard to ignore. This should be the story by itself, and indeed, international media has been giving it some attention, but there is a more localized story of ocean heating that I want to focus on. Uh, so, if you look at this, uh, you don't have to be a climatologist to look at that red line up at the top 
going through the ceiling. That is 2023, uh, leaving the global average behind, uh, just flying off the top of the charts. Uh, and here is the true WTF image, the North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomaly using this data, and then he has a link to all of that. So if you miss that red line in the last one, here is what the North Atlantic Ocean temperatures. Uh, you, you know, I was just remarking, looking at it, is uh, like off of Southeast Greenland, and I guess west of Scandinavia. Uh, this, this thing has gone completely off the charts. Since I first published the North Atlantic image on Twitter, the image has gone viral internationally. As of this writing, it has attracted over 2.7 million views on Twitter and has been featured in media worldwide. That's how hungry people are to know it's happening. The current North Atlantic anomaly is why I am writing this post and will be the subject of everything that follows. And I think my camera... I still have a, a, a bitch about this camera. I mean, I like this camera, but there's no red recording light out up front for me to see. And when the camera, when the battery dies, the camera doesn't shut down. You see, I have no idea if this is still recording or not. Anyway, the series, the CERES website, which he has a link to, publishes monthly updates to what is commonly known as the Earth Energy Imbalance. The Earth Energy Imbalance, yes. The data allows us to know the difference between incoming solar radiation and outgoing radiation from all sources. We're having the little 4x4 four four caravan going by. Alright, this data allows us to know the difference between incoming solar radiation and outgoing radiation from all uh, sources. That difference is the effective, effective rate of heating on the planet. Um, as of March 2023, on an annualized basis, the rate was 1.61 watts per hour. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's 1.61 watts per square meter. That might not sound like a lot, but on a global basis, it is about equal to the energy released from 1.3 Hiroshima-sized nuclear bombs exploding every second. As you probably know, the planet's oceans absorb about 89% of the excess heat generated by global warming. Over the last three La Nina years, on average, the ocean's share of the EEI has been equivalent to about 9.8 Hiroshima bombs per second, or about 930 million Hiroshima's in total. The ocean is hot and getting hotter all the time, but until now, we have not directly seen that. So if you want to see Elliot's graph of effective ocean heating in Hiroshima's per second, Ah, uh, <laughs> that's what that graph looks like. Hiroshima nuclear bombs per second. You see where that is going. We don't have to wait for the methane bomb. There is an obvious reason to explain some of the ocean heating that is happening right now. The unexpectedly rapid onset of El Nino, which typically drives massive surface heating of the eastern tropical Pacific. But what about other parts of the ocean? What about the North Atlantic? 
You know, I'm not too far from the North Atlantic Ocean myself right now. And uh, as I say, heading to 45 degrees Fahrenheit here tonight. Anyway. Uh, okay, then... Uh, I, he starts, Elliot, I, I love Elliot, but sometimes he gets a little bit too in deep into the technical stuff for me. Uh, anyway, so he talks about, um, then he talks a little bit about uh, global dimming, which I've had rants about. So in the middle of this, he gets into that, um, about global dimming by cleaning up shipping fuels, massive regions of the world's oceans that were protected from heating by shipping sulfate aerosols are now experiencing rapid warming. This includes the main shipping routes between Asia and the western U.S., as well as the major routes from the eastern U.S. to Europe and the Middle East, and that's where the warming is happening. This rapid heating is known as termination shock, and it appears to be at least in part what is happening right now. I did a video on this subject last week that... Uh, about the global, the great global dimming debate. Uh, okay, there is another possible input to the heating worthy of note. Dust from the Sahara Desert typically blows west this time of year, blocking incoming radiation while trapping existing heat. So far this year, the dust has not come the lack of dust is notable and also could be a direct cause of some of the North Atlantic heating. For more, here's an article on that topic. And let's do not forget about the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai explosive underwater volcanic eruption on January 15th, 1922 that sent massive plumes of water vapor into the at, into the stratosphere. Huh. <coughs> How did I forget about the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hai Pai? <coughs> How did I forget about that? Uh... <coughs> okay, so what is Elliot Jacobson's opinion about all of this, all of these WTFs? It is my opinion that the combination of years of ocean heating generated by the EEI, the energy in, in, imbalance, heating on Antarctica due to open ocean, shifts in winds and surface heating due to El Nino, lack of Saharan dust, and... IMO, I guess, in my opinion, you know, Elliot, you, you got to cut the EEIs and the IMOs. I don't know if IMO means in my opinion or not. So I, I'm just going to make this. Uh, uh, when, when I was a copy editor uh, for years, I was always... Uh, possibly erring on the side of, of when you're writing for particularly for a lay audience and you introduce a subject, a, a, a term that has several words in it that nobody's ever heard before and you mention it one time and for the rest of the, the article, I err on just spelling it out pretty much every time. I mean, eventually, WTF, you don't need to spell out. So I don't know if IMO uh, is in my opinion. Anyway, uh, it is my opinion that the combination of all of this stuff have together triggered unprecedented ocean surface warming, 
I don't have the expertise to put these in any particular causal order, but that doesn't really matter. The consequences are clear.